Hello, I'm Jerry Romine, the Entrepreneur of Abroad, and restaurant stocks have been on fire, and the top 10 we're covering today are up 26% in the last week, and they're still down 22% year to date. These stocks are really hot right now, and the real question is, should you buy, and do you know why or why not? For example, Ruth's stock was up 15% yesterday, and that's in one day alone. And there's no doubt these restaurant stocks are getting caught up in the reopening of the economy. But as long-term investors, we need to make sure that we are buying undervalued stocks. If we get caught up in the hype and the news and follow the herd mentality, we might just end up jumping off a cliff. And my own personal opinion is that right now, restaurant stocks make better swing trades than blind long-term investments. And sometimes the most important lesson that we can learn is to think for ourselves and know when we should invest and when we should not invest. And as we go through today's Beast Mode stock analysis, I'll share my thoughts and try to give you some insight into my thinking. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor and you should always draw your own conclusions. So grab a cup of coffee and join me because this is not your normal stock channel. If you've not already watched my video on how to analyze stocks, be sure to check it out. It'll make fundamental analysis much easier and that link is in the description below. Hello and welcome to Beast Mode Stock Analysis. Today we are looking at the restaurant stocks. We've got Dave & Buster's, which is ticker P-L-A-Y, The Cheesecake Factory, ticker C-A-K-E, Dine Brands Global, ticker D-I-N, Roots Hospitality, R-U-T-H, Denny's, D-E-N-N, Bloomin' Brands Incorporated, B-L-M-N, Darden Restaurants, D-R-I, Jack in the Box, ticker J-A-C-K, Yum Brands, which is ticker Y-U-M, and McDonald's, ticker M-C-D. The first thing we notice is if we look at the 10-day moving average, all of the different stocks are trading well above that moving average. That just goes to show you that they've been on a real tear lately. Next, if we look at the price percentage of the 52-week high, I can tell you that all of these stocks are trading at roughly a 35% discount compared to their 52-week highs. The year-to-date stock gains are about a 22% discount. The return over one week, we can see these stocks have been on fire with the best one being Dave & Buster's, ticker PLAY, with a 57.55% gain. And in the last month, they have gained 82.35%, which is really impressive. You can go across here and look at the numbers for the rest of them yourself and see where they're all coming in at. The next thing I notice is out of all of the stocks, only one of them is up over the last six months. They're also up over the last year, and that would be McDonald's. For the last two years, they are up the most out of any of these different stocks. Our next section is the earnings, income, and growth, and this tells us whether or not the companies are making money. I always like to look at the PE ratio, and ideally I want to be under 20, and the S&P 500 average has been historically 13 to 15, and we can see a lot of these companies come in with a real low PE ratio. For example, Denny's is coming in at 6.92, and David Buster's is coming in at 9.91. We've got a few others that are coming in a little bit higher, BLMN at 43.8, and then we've got Jack in the Box, Yum, and McDonald's all coming in in the upper 20s. My Beast Mode stock analysis is color-coded, and my most important color is blue, followed by green and then tan. Then I also use arrows for a cheat sheet. So if it's got an up arrow, I'm looking for a high number, and if it has a down arrow, I'm looking for a low number. And there's always gonna be a lot more data in these sheets than what I can go over in a short video. Now, if we look at the net income margin, the higher the number, the better. And what jumps off the page for me here is McDonald's at 27.5%. We also have Denny's coming in at 20 22.79%, followed by Yum at 19.89%. So, so far, McDonald's is looking pretty good. As long-term investors, total shareholder yield is something that should be very important to you. And this is a three ways management of a public company can distribute cash to shareholders, and that's with cash dividends, stock repurchases, and debt reduction. When we look at the total shareholder yield here, we can see the first eight are all negative, and only Yum and McDonald's are positive, and they're not even positive by a large amount, but at least they're positive. As a long-term investor, we want to look at the financials and whether or not the company is running on a good margin. Now, the operating margin is a really important indicator to look at, and the S&P 500 average is 10.8%. Anything less than that is subpar. So when we look at this, we can see a lot of these have subpar operating margins. Our best one, again, is McDonald's at 41.4%. We've got Yum at 33.8%. That looks pretty good. And then we've got uh, Dine Brands Global coming in at 22.2%. So as a long-term investor, I 
definitely want to be looking at the operating margin and the higher the better. After that, we've got the Altman Z score and this determines whether a company is headed for bankruptcy. The formula takes into account profitability, leverage, liquidity, solvency, and activity ratios. An Altman Z score close to 1.8 suggests the company might be headed for bankruptcy while a score closer to 3 suggests the company is in good solid financial positioning. So here we can see that McDonald's is coming in very well at a 4.13 but we can see several of these other companies do have some issues with Dave & Buster's Play coming in at 1.34 DIN coming in at 1.72, BLMN coming in at 1.19, and YUM coming in at 1.54. I would like to add that with the Beast Mode stock analysis, we look at a lot of different data points, and I never put a lot of weight on just one individual data point. Rather, I want to take a look at the overall big picture. So here we've got McDonald's at 4.13, and based on the Altman Z score, this looks really good. But in a minute, I'm going to show you something about McDonald's that's actually a concern for me, and hopefully that'll be an educational experience for everybody. The balance sheet tells us whether or not a company is financially stable and this is really important to me as a long-term investor and I like to look at the total assets versus total liabilities or what I call the tattle ratio because it tattles on the company's overall financial strength. Ideally I like to see this coming in at a two or higher which just means it has twice the assets compared to the liabilities. When we look at play we can see that they are just barely positive at 1.077. What does this actually mean? It just means that they've got more assets assets than liabilities. So here they've got a total assets of $2.3 billion and they have total liabilities of $2.2 billion. So they're, barely, so they're barely positive. When we look here, we can see a bunch of zeros for cake and this is going to be a data problem. So we just have to go with what we have here and I apologize for that. So we don't have any good data on this right now. And this could be for a variety of reasons. It could have to do with reporting or different things. Okay, the next thing I want to point out is any of these companies where it is orange here, that means they actually have more liabilities than they do assets and that's a major concern for me. It's like asking do you want to invest in a business that owes more than it's worth? That's what you're looking at right here. We've got Dine Brands which has more liabilities than assets. We have Denny's which surprisingly has more liabilities than assets. We've got Jack in the Box with more liabilities than assets. And to put this in context, they have $1.8 billion in assets and they have $2.7 billion in liabilities. Well, that's a big red flag. Then we've got Yum and they're even worse. They've got $6 billion in assets and they've got $14.3 billion in liabilities. Remember how I mentioned on McDonald's, even though their Altman Z score looks good, there would be something down here that would be a red flag for me? This is it. So they actually have more liabilities than they do assets. Now, does this mean that McDonald's is going to up and disappear? No, I don't think so, but it's definitely a reason for me where I just don't like buying into companies that owe more than they are worth. And let me try to explain this importance another way. Have you ever known somebody that looked rich, but if you really got to know them, you'd find out they were really broke and the initials would be AF as something? Well, that's how I look at the tattle ratio. If you have more liabilities than assets, you are broke AF. And that's a major concern for me. So it's kind of like looking at somebody and they drive a nice BMW, they've got a really nice car, but you find out that they actually don't make enough money to stay above water and they have more liabilities than assets. Well, that's what the tattle ratio tells us here. So we've got five different companies right here that owe more than they are worth. Major red flag for me. And as a long-term investor, that should be a concern for you as well. And when you look at the numbers here, this is where something like the beast mode stock analysis can really save your butt and it can say, hey, this is a concern for me. Maybe I should be looking to another company to buy into. As a long-term investor, another important sector is the debt ratio. And the debt to equity ratio compares a company's total liabilities to its shareholder equity and can be used to evaluate how much leverage a company is using. Higher leverage ratios tend to indicate a company or stock with higher risk to shareholders. And that's all we need to know. High debt is a high risk to a shareholder. So if you have more liabilities than you have assets, that's going to be a very high risk. And that's why this shows negative on each of these different companies. And then if you look at the debt ratios for everybody else, all of them are coming in with very high debt ratios. Another major red flag. Now we move into phase two and this is where we get into value price targets and analyst sentiment and here everything is subjective. The first thing I want to look at is the Peter Lynch estimator and anytime I've got a near value or undervalue that always gets my attention. 
So we've got a near value for Ruth. And for the Patreons, be sure to check your spreadsheet today because this will be important for you when you compare this to the future five. For the estimated intrinsic value, I always like to have a conservative number and I always want to buy, whenever possible anyway, below the estimated intrinsic value. So here we can see we've got an intrinsic value of 15.54 for Dave and Buster's and it's currently trading at 20.97. So that's not an ideal situation. And you can look at the rest of these numbers coming across here, but more importantly, what I want to do is share with you why it's so important that we look at data like this and we form our own opinions. If we were just going to trust these numbers by themselves and do it blindly, it can be very dangerous. When I see that a company has more liabilities and assets, I would not want a financial advisor telling me, hey, go out and buy Dine Brands. It's a great buy. We estimate their intrinsic value of $60 and it's currently trading at $63.65. I would be like, hey, what are you talking about? They currently have more liabilities and assets. Can you explain to me in plain English how and why this is a good buy? I was taught if you have more liabilities than you have assets, that's a real problem. And you're telling me that the stock is worth $60 per share? That's just simply not how I invest. And I would encourage everybody to develop their own style, but maybe you would look at it the same way. Another good example is Yum, and they've got $6 billion in assets. They've got $14.3 billion in liabilities, and they owe a lot more than they are worth. Yet we've got an intrinsic value of $83.52. Well, for me, thinking for myself on that, oh, hell no, I'm not interested in this. Just look at the amount of liabilities they have compared to their assets, and there's no way that this number makes sense to me. So I'm just trying to say you always want to think for yourself when you're looking at these numbers, and that's why spreadsheets like this can be so valuable. Okay, our next stop here is the analyst recommendations. And if you've been a longtime listener of mine, you know that I like to check the analyst recommendations, and normally I want to be on the same side as the analyst. Well, here we've got McDonald's coming in with 18 buy recommendations, and they've got uh, 10 hold recommendations. Well, I am in complete disagreement with that. I'm not going to be buying McDonald's just because I don't like their tattle ratio. They owe more than they're worth. Not a good sign for me. So this is a case where I look at all of the data, I form my own conclusions, and based on the analysts, I would say, analysts, thank you. You guys go your own direction. I'm not interested. And of course, you want to draw your own conclusions. And that doesn't mean we can't make money with these guys. That doesn't mean the stocks aren't going to go up. But to me, it means that it doesn't make sense for the stocks to go up because they have bad fundamentals. Of course, we could still play them with swing trades and make money. I mean, these stocks are definitely up a lot in the last week and a lot in the last month. So there are financial opportunities there, but we want to make sure we're wearing the right hat. Are we a long-term investor or are we a swing trader? Our next section is the analyst price targets, and this can be a fun one to look at. And I always like to look at the analyst target mean price, which is just the average price. And if the stock is trading above both the intrinsic and the analyst target mean price, to me that's a good sign that the stock is overvalued. And if you look at these stocks, you'll find that's mainly the case today. Next, we can look at the Piotrowski score, and this is one that I like to look at, and it helps to find companies with a healthy liquid balance sheet, profitability, and operating efficiency. And here, we ideally want to have a number coming in at five or higher, and everybody is coming in pretty well, and there's different, uh, there's a couple fours here, and it's kind of funny because the numbers don't always match, and that's why we want to look at the big picture. So here, McDonald's has a six, even though I personally don't like McDonald's, and I put more weight on the tattle ratio than I do on this Piotrowski score. So everybody's going to look at things a little different and that's okay. And the last thing we're going to look at today is the relative strength index or the RSI. And we can see everybody is at or around 70, which just means that the stocks are currently overbought. And if I was in these stocks, I might be looking for a point to take profits if they pulled back. I put in a lot of time, work, and effort into my videos. And if you'd like to see more, all I ask is for a like and subscribe. Thanks. I appreciate the love. And if you want to get a copy of my Beast Mode spreadsheet, it's available on my Patreon page and there's a lot of special bonus information just for Patreons. The total cost is only $20 per month and there's a ton of value. All right, let's get on with today's picks. I currently see the stock market as overvalued and after checking every one of these stocks, I can tell you they're all overbought on the RSI if you look at the charts. And let me give you seven reasons why I'm down on restaurant stocks as a long-term investment at this precise moment in time. Number one, they've lost a lot of money during the crisis and they're not getting that back anytime soon. Number two, new social distancing requirements may change their seating capacity and revenue potential. Number three, 40 million people are still unemployed. Number four, until actual revenue is reported with quarterly earnings, everything is pure speculation and that's a big unknown. Number five, the fundamentals on restaurant, they just suck right now. Number six, 50% of these restaurants currently have more liabilities than assets. Tell me that isn't scary. 
And number seven, the debt ratio on these restaurants is crazy high. Now, I personally would not buy these restaurants as a long-term buy and hold, but you can look at their gains for the last week and for the last month, and you can tell they have been on fire, and I would be willing to trade these as swing trades. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, and you always want to do your own research and draw your own conclusions. And for my Patreons, be sure to check out Ruth and check out the Peter Lynch indicator, and then look at the Future 5 and compare it against all of the other restaurants, and you'll notice that there's something really different for Ruth's. And Patreons, I've also posted a special Restaurants Number 2 edition that's just for you, and that's in the Patreon section as well. I hope that you enjoyed today's videos. Be sure to sound off in the comments below and give me some YouTube love. Thanks. And if you've not already gotten your two free stocks from Webull valued at up to $1,400, that link is in the description below. I use Webull, and I love the platform. If you have not already, make sure you sign up for Webull to get a free stock worth up to $1,400. Webull is much more than a free stock trading app. And I have a free tutorial video on Webull that's so good, Webull actually called me after viewing it. Both the promo and Webull tutorial link are in the description below. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll see you soon on a fresh new video. See ya!